season finale of season two of Primal. First of all, <laughs> even though I was so good and tried to avoid spoilers, I forgot to turn off the notifications for banner notifications on my phone. So I got YouTube comments on my banner giving the spoiler away. Seriously, if you haven't watched yet, stay away, block, my channel until you watch the show. Block everybody, just just, just stay off. Avoid the YouTube notifications. Cause everyone was just commenting, hey Alt Yuri, this happened and this person did this. And I'm like, what is the point? If you think I didn't watch it yet, why are you telling me that? I don't even get it. That's just freaking rude, but that was my fault. Let's go into Echoes of Eternity. So we get a look at Spear's past life, and what is really interesting is that Spear seems to be a later version of some hominid. I like when his father turned around and my partner was like, oof. <laughs> like, why'd you have to do his father like that? But it's clear, even when you look at Spear, that he is more ape. Look at his father's nose, his father's mouth. Spear clearly has more human features than his father. When you even consider the whole beard thing, the ridge is more pronounced. So I think Spear either is a mutation or is father bred with something else that gave him spear. When you look at all the other people as well, the males and females, they clearly all look ape-like. Saber two tigers attack Spear's family. His father is a badass and you can tell where he gets it from. I mean, these things are just tearing everyone literally apart. Spear watches his family be killed in front of him and he goes ape, quite literally. <laughs> He tries to help his father fight. You can tell his father is a badass. His father apparently also was a leader of the clan. And I don't remember, so I think when Spear was younger, didn't his father look different? Maybe that was his son, but his kids were smaller when he was teaching him to hunt. So I thought that was Spear's father that was teaching him. I have to look back at the episode, but I'm pretty sure that was Spear's father. And I sure as shit don't remember him looking like that. <laughs> Spear saw his family massacred in front of him. This poor man has not had a break in his freaking life. He is filled with so much hurt and pain. And you can tell when he awakens his warrior in this moment when he's like, no, I'm done with this. That's when he unlocks the inner ape inside of him. You see his eyes turn into that. That's that part of him that is his father. At least that's what I'm guessing. Dude. So yeah, you didn't have to tell me. Like if I was trying to wonder who this was, it's very obviously Spear. His mannerisms, his face, you can tell it's a young version of Spear. He learned to fight at a very young age and he also had the motivation. After Spear is done killing off the Sabretooth people, the rest of the eight people, you can look at their hands too, like that's such great attention to detail. Like they look, I don't know, I don't know the history of hominids that well. I know there were several different iterations before we got to Neanderthals and Hopus homo sapiens, but look at their hands, look at their faces, look at the hands, see how they look? Those look like chimpanzee fingers. Spear clearly has just meaty human hands. So they take the chief chain, I guess, and because Spear killed all the saber tooth, they're like, well, your dad's dead, so you're next in line as a leader of the clan. And so now he is their leader, which is like, oh, what happened to this people? Manor wakes up Spear. She's like, my land, my land, my panties. She's just overjoyed. She looks like a female version of Littlefoot. This is where she gets to the beach and she has a flashback of what her life was like before. It's also fun to see Fang's babies finally have their own personalities and interact with the world around them as well as each other. So these were the choices for the names. You guys chose to bend and snap. Not at all what I expected, but okay. Anyway, the babies are interacting with their world and it's so sweet to see them doing that. The baby, uh, who is the male, this one, uh, Ben, I guess? He is so annoying, but it's so cute because his personality fits his father's personality in a lot of ways. And then the female fits the mother's personality with a little tinge of the father's as well. <laughs> 
He just always runs headfirst into everything. So we see a flashback of Mira hiding and her boyfriend coming up behind her. They're playing with each other. It's so sweet to see Mira so happy. But of course, they can't have nice things. And as he catches her, they see the Vikings on the shore. Her friend Amara and her husband or boyfriend is already standing there and the husband is trying to protect her. These dudes are clearly much larger and much more imposing and they have a weaponry that can chop these guys' heads off. I mean, seriously, there is no competition. The guy tries to go after this guy because he is in his face. The, the guy who got beat down or fallen knew that these people, these invaders, were here on, up to no good. They have weapons and armor. They're standing over them and posing. And this poor woman, can you imagine what it's like? You're all just having fun and these things that you've never seen before, these men that look like giants just come onto your land and try to just kill you and do kill you? She's running for her life and gets hit with an axe. Peter's crying out her friend's name and she watches as her boyfriend is just like, th there's like no contest. These poor people, I feel so bad for them. We're reminded that these people didn't just go and capture people they just straight up kill people with no mercy no consideration for them Mira screaming over here looking like freaking Jafar from Aladdin that's how you know the fear is real savage it shows the whole story how Mira is branded and put as a slave in the boat and she is given an opportunity to get herself out of that situation just reliving all of that remembering the people that she lost must have been so awful for her Ben keeps trying to put baby Ben back in into the boat and he's just like no mommy i want to go and that way he's more like his mom and after a while she's like you know what whatever drown fang is the kind of mother where she's like all right i'm gonna try everything to protect you but if you don't listen you're on your own she swims across the water and the babies follow they get to meter's village oh look it's jay-z but before they do spear sees Mira worshiping her lunar god spear actually starts worshiping with her he cares about her as far as he's concerned meter is his family he doesn't know exactly why he's doing this or what it means but he knows it's important to Mira, and so he joins her the cutest thing is watching fang pick up her sleeping babies and putting them next to spear knowing that they're completely safe with him it is so cute like the fact that a dinosaur trusts a human person with her children is a big deal she and spear have been through so much together and i'm gonna say something right here I absolutely hated this episode. The more I think about it, the madder I get. I'll tell you exactly why. Because you're a jaded asswipe. It's just, <sighs> let's continue. Fang smells something and sees a, an unclad woman bathing. Mira hears a scream as Fang is roaring. She discovers it's Amara, her best friend, and you can see the scar on her back. The two embrace, both of them having thought the other was dead. Spear and Mira and her friend and the dinosaurs all go up to the village. This is kind of a tense moment because I'm wondering if Fang is going to end up eating Mira's people. It's so good to have her back with her family, but it must be a very awkward situation for Spear. And Spear's ready to fight them too because they have their weapons out. You can also tell the babies are a lot bigger. They mirror exactly what their mom is doing. So when she roars at people, they roar at people. I can't understand what she was saying, but it sounds like she's saying, or it seems as though she's saying, hey, it's okay, they're my friends. They're friendly, they're my friends. Probably something along the lines of spear and then they, 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 they save my life. They're not going to hurt you. Just put your weapons down. And we see somebody with Mira's head shape come out who's really old. And I'm guessing this is Mira's father. It's so good to see her back home. That is definitely her daddy. Look, they're shaped the same. They both have these long ass necks that never end. Neither does your talking, apparently. The father is saddened, but she tries to tell him it's okay. Everything's fine, I'm home now. It doesn't matter anymore. They do a tribal dance, and they give thanks to their god, probably in celebration to Mira's return. Spear is just freaking eating. He's just trying to enjoy himself. He's... <laughs> You know when you're eating dinner? I hate it so much. You know when you're at a family dinner and you haven't seen your parents in a while on something like Christmas or holidays or whatever, and you're in the middle of eating and your parents are like, hey, and then you look up from eating and you see them holding a camera while your mouth is freaking stuffed. And this is, <laughs> this is your face. I used to hate that shit so 
much. I'm like, bro, I'm eating. They did change it up after a while. They're like, okay, let's take pictures and make our Christmas cards after dinner, which makes a lot more sense. No one wants to see you wolfing down freaking cranberry and stuffing while you're in an intimate setting. It's so annoying. Mira's just so happy that Spear is a part of her life. But Spear sees Fang and her children at the top of the roof, and he just doesn't fit this. His family is Fang and her children. So he goes to sleep beside them. Mira says, you don't have to sleep here. You can sleep inside a building. Fang is like, um, oop, don't mind if I do. And her babies follow. I was just thinking as they got to this part, I'm like, you know what? After everything Spear's been through, he needs to tell his story. And that's exactly what he does. He tells his story on a blank canvas, he uses the gravel or ash and his blood to start his story. Mira sees it. And this is probably the first time she's gotten his backstory. Remember, he asked, asked her like what is with the thing on your head and she drew in the sand her whole life story well not her whole life story but the most important part how she ended up here how she had a life with her family and she was taken away by these slavers she's never gotten spear story so as she comes in she sees spear on the floor completely covered in blood from his fingers and soot and the story started with him being a little boy the saber tooth tigers attacking his father and then him becoming the ruler over his people it doesn't say what happened to them but he found a wife that looked more like him i don't know if there was a thing there like maybe that's just a different story so he did a different art style to show like what happened his hand being there is just basically like his name i guess it's his identity. He meets a pretty girl, a more human girl, has two children, a boy and a girl. And then there is blood and this dinosaur with a big horn on it. It's his entire family. Mira is seeing all of this for the first time. Now she completely understands how much pain Spear has been carrying. She never knew this before. She thought she suffered. He suffered more. Not like anybody's having a competition, but I'm just saying like she never knew that. The way he carried himself, she never would have guessed that he was carrying all of that pain with him all alone. Then it shows how he met Mira and he showed the tattoo on the back of her head and the slavers and how they went on a journey. We can see Fang in the boat with the both of them, Spear and Mira. And they sail to her village and she's over here with Fang and the babies and Spear is off in the distance all by himself watching over them completely alone everyone has found their family spear has no family like they are his family but you know his children are gone and the one thing i kept saying to myself is because i got spoilers if you're still here and you're watching shame on you i don't want to hear how i spoil anything because you should have stayed away from it but i got a major spoiler i was thinking it would be sad if something happened to spear and he did not get to continue his line knowing that's something he wanted anyway that morning spear sitting out by himself just contemplating he feels lonely he's happy that fang has her children and everything's fine fang is safe but now that they're actually safe i don't know how long this is that that's happening that he's been with meter for a while so keep in mind when we're getting these stories we're getting mega time jumps like we're talking about weeks because they're on the ocean sailing they're probably on that ocean that that boat for a long time and it's clear because the babies had grown so much since the last time we saw them so we're probably talking about maybe a few months maybe or a few weeks but now that he's rested he's had all that time and he's like i don't have a family and then we see the freaking thing following him of course he has to fight again because no rest for the weary you know I'm thinking to myself, all these people are gonna freaking die, bro. They're all gonna freaking die. But Fang and Spear, they ride out. You can see Jay-Z's on fire. And for the first time in a long time, Fang and Spear are like, oh, well, damn. You know what? I'm good. Uh, I'm just gonna... This thing is freaking Marvel Avengers turning into freaking, like, I mean, what are they supposed to do right now? Blasting freaking fire, death and destruction. There is no way. Fang is like, deuces, bro. I mean, like, I got kids. I can't be doing this when we have this coming after us. Then the thing turns into a snake. Remember, this is the Viking guy that wanted revenge on Spear and Fang. I'm so scared because I'm like, oh God, the babies are there. Oh dear. But they're safe somewhere right now. And thank goodness the thing's not after the babies, it's after them. Mira's like, wow. Um, okay. 
I'll let them get that. And I can feel the fear that Fang and Spear are facing right now. They run high up on the mountain until there's no place for them to go and they have to fight. The saddest moment is when Fang, well, something happens. And I swear to you, all freaking hell breaks loose because I don't know what I expected to happen. I didn't know how they were gonna beat this, but what happens next, I did not expect at all. So Fang is on fire, which is really heartbreaking, you know, like death's door kind of situation. And Fang is the most important thing to Spear right now. And Spear just gets vengeful. He goes eight, he gets vengeful and charges headlong into this fire dude. Oh my God. I can't even explain to you like how I feel right now after watching this because it takes a turn and you don't expect it to happen. I was not expecting it to happen. Everything happened so fast and slow at the same time. <laughs> like oh shit as Fe as spear is dying on fire he is beating the hell out of this thing i'm not completely sure what happens but this thing is kind of defeated and i think the viking guy was more taken aback by the fact spear was able to catch on fire without going through hell like he did i'm expecting that something is going to happen and spear is going to fight his way out of hell or something but no he just straight up is a badass and while he's on fire fights to the freaking death he is obviously not pure human and the other guy's just looking at him like um, okay, so misunderstanding, I guess. <laughs> While the Viking guy is lying there and Mira tries to put out the fire, Demon takes back his power. He's like, okay, you've embarrassed me, first of all. So your ass is coming back to set to hell. I'm gonna shove my sharp claw so far up your ass it comes through your eyes. Cause you look like me and now people think that I'm a bitch. Mira calls for help. You don't realize how bad Spear is, like how bad he's hurt until we actually see him. He has like third degree burnt, like he's really bad. He got cooked. Aang is so worried for him and there's nothing they can do, like his nose nose is burned off, his lips are burned off. I don't even know how he still has hair and eyes. But again, he's part ape. Like, maybe that's why they showed us like what his family looked like. He clearly is not totally human. Or else he would have been dead a long time ago. There's something else going on here. The woman, ooh, look at those freaking nails, bro. You need some avocados. Anyway, she, he, whatever is like, yeah, there's nothing we can do. He's going. It's very sad. He saved all of us. Even though there was a bit of plot armor there because the demon just so happened to take back the power right there and then. There was nothing written at that time saying that, hey, if you don't beat him in this amount of seconds after seeing him, I'm gonna take back your power. So it was a bit unexpected. But like, that's the only way that they were gonna get out of that. Although, you know. This part is so freaking sad. Spear is still alive, but he is hanging on by a thread. <laughs> Aang does what she always does and she's just like, I can't, I can't be in the room with him. I'm so, I can't, I can't watch him die. I just, the same thing she did with Rain. She's like, I love him too much. I can't do this. I can't do this. And she bounces. And apparently there are some people that do that. They just don't want to be in the room when the person leaves. They just they don't want that to be the last memory of the person. They just can't handle it. And I try not to judge people like that. I mean, I know Fang's a dinosaur, but my partner kind of did the same thing with his cat when he had brought her to be put to sleep. And he was just so over overcome and he didn't want the cat to see him upset so he left and he's like I can't be there when you do it me I'm different I'm like look my my animals already scared especially if they're still all there I want to be there for them because they're already afraid if they know what's going on you know like I think it matters you know them being the last you being the last thing just loving them and whispering in their ear it's okay I love you I love you so much even though it hurts. I know guys are a little bit different, but I can't, I couldn't. But Fang and some people are just like, no, I can't. Which is like messed up because if the roles were reversed, Spear would have stayed there with Fang. He would have, he wouldn't have left her. But Fang's personality is just like, like I can't be in the room. I can't do this. Which is messed up too, cause she stayed there with Range, you know? Only thing Spear can say is Mira's name. He keeps calling out to her and there's just nothing that she can do. She is sad to be losing him. And he just looks jacked up. Everything that, that 
Spear has gone through for this freaking slaver dude to come back and do this to him and him to fight for her, fight for her people, fight for Fang, fight for, well, Fang was fighting too, but fight for the family, fight for everyone, basically. Spear has given his whole life and the only thing he gets is a nice little funeral, no kids, no family. My partner were both saying that like around the same time. This can't be the end for him. And the good news is, it is, but it's not. I mean, that's bad news, but it's kind of not. There's only one thing that Mater can do for him. Only one. And it's the most important thing in the whole wide world to Spear. Damn. Spear gets the one thing that he always wanted. He doesn't die in vain. There's a major time jump. And this is the most beautiful part of the story as we see Fang, her children, the big male is all grown up. They need proper names now. Bend and Snap are their child nicknames. They need proper names now as adult T-Rexes. But her whole family just comes into view and we see Rogue and her brother or whatever they're gonna be called now and a little girl who looks like a perfect combination between Mira, who grew back her hair by the way, and Spear. They're giving each other this knowing look that I guess we're supposed to, you know, I'm waiting for the punchline. I don't know what it is again, but they all roar and do that same iconic thing, that little pose that Spear did in the first one. In the first thing, like they're all roaring, fang roars, but I think the female T-Rex is is going to be probably this girl's favorite. It's a callback to season one, how it started. This is how it ends. And in season one, this is how Spear's journey started. Fang is still alive, but now her daughter, they're doing exactly the same pose. And that's how it ends. And I am freaking livid. I am livid because I love this show so much and the ending was so good. However, I feel like that ending should have been three episodes or two episodes. I feel like it felt rushed. They were either rushing Jendi to finish it or something because it just, the whole thing between him and the Colossus should have been its own episode. The whole thing with them growing up and whatever should have been their own episodes. I was expecting Spear to die and him fighting his way out of hell and defeating that big God thing below realms of hell or something. That's what I was expecting. You know what it felt like? And I'm not saying this is it for sure. It felt like people were like, no, we want you to make this ending here, Jendi. And now that, you know, you know, I mean, this is good. And Jendi's like, I want more creativity. This is what I want. No, but this has to be this way. Cause you know, it was all about this. Now we want it to be this. And Jendi was probably like, all right, you know what? I'm done. I'm gonna give you the ending and I'm, I'm done. I'm walking away. That, that's, that, that is what it is that's what it feels like to me it probably is something completely different but that's just the that's just that's just i don't know just a feeling it's something along those lines but i was very disappointed because i feel like we just got a finale finale and it should have been stretched out a little bit longer they just killed off spear and it didn't feel like there was a payoff if i didn't get that big spoiler that spear was dead because people kept saying it which again is very fucking stupid like i get it if you are reading the comments and people are talking about it but when people are literally literally atting you, like mentioning you and being like, hey, Spear's dead, did you know? On completely different videos, not even related to this. It's kind of a dick mother for move. I'm sorry, that's kind of messed up. You go out of your way to find me to spoil that for me, that is messed up. It's not like I was scrolling and I got the spoiler because I made sure I stayed off. I didn't follow anyone. I don't really follow anyone at all that talks about Primal. I'm basically the only YouTuber I watch, which is not really saying much because I make my own content with Primal because I specifically am avoiding the spoilers. And here comes people fighting me on some other unrelated video. Hey, hey Altiori, did you know that Spear died? Like, what is wrong with you? You freaking sick dick. Even though I already knew like that something like that might happen, I walked into this knowing, oh, well, Spear's gonna die. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's going to be something else. Maybe he's gonna go down to hell and, but no, he just died. He never gets to see his child, never gets to hold him again. I mean, it's sweet. You know what it feels like? It feels like edging. Okay, never mind. Um, You nasty slut. It feels like when you're, you're building up to something or 
we're you're you're about to get a surprise. Like you don't know. You have a feeling that somebody is going to give you a surprise birthday party. I can't relate because I don't really like those things. But you're like, ooh, I wonder if I'm gonna get this, and it's usually an elaborate thing. And you know, you like being surprised. Let's say you're the kind of person that likes that. You go to the door, and someone's like, hey, do you know they're gonna throw you a surprise party? That's not even the greatest analogy I can think of. But no, the only other thing I can think is like, imagine yourself. You're getting like pleasured, right? And you're building up to it. it doesn't have to be that. It could be food. It could be a ride or whatever. You're like, ooh, a roller coaster. It could be anything. And you're building up to it and you're waiting in this long ass line. Let's say it's a roller coaster. You're waiting in this line for like two hours. That's a thing. And then you get to the ride and it's the most awesome ride ever, but it's only like 11 seconds, which makes no sense. Like 11 seconds after you've stood two hours in line in the hot sun in New Jersey. You know, kind of feels like that. Kind of feels like that. Now, it doesn't feel like Game of Thrones Season 8. Like I said, the ending was beautiful. I just feel like it was rushed. I feel like we're skipping the entire... Like, I had to go back and look and make sure that we were watching the right episode because that's how rushed it felt. I feel like we watch something and we're like, oh boy, I think we were supposed to watch something before this. But no, they came to the land and this was the one that was promoed to be the one we we're supposed to watch next. So I don't know what happened with that. I'll be honest. I love the show so much, but the way that it ended was just so freaking fast. This should have either have been two episodes or it should have instead being a 20 long, a uh, 20 minute long episode, it should have been like maybe 30 even or 45. This should have been a 45. This should have been a finale. Unless it's not a finale. Unless, you know, because Jenny likes to do that stuff and then we have season three and people are like, oh, we're gonna have to give him more money. God damn it. And it was a dream. You know, her fam, Mira's family's not really real. You know, Spears not real. But then how would he have known about the fire god? thing like so many questions i mean if he d decides to continue the show there are many ways that you can write this for it to make sense maybe spear's not really dead but then without spear you don't really have a show like you have fang but his little girl i don't know her like i i would rather even see mira fight but mira's not really that kind of fighter so for me it did feel very rushed it feels like it feels like somebody spoiled the ending and they're like, hey, this is what happens in a nutshell if for the ending. And there were two episodes leading up to that that we just missed. That's just how I feel. I feel like, you know, I got an edge session and there was like two seconds of payoff, which is like, dude, really? Like, what? Like, who, who, who is messing with Jendi right now? I don't know. But I... Don't know what to say. Like, it's a great ending. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, I keep reiterating myself. Great ending. Just felt like it was too early and it felt like a summary of three episodes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, that's all I got. I got, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? You know, just being honest, I'm sad if this is the ending of the show and it's cute, but like the time jump though was just so ridiculous. Like I'm so, I, I need some more time to sit and process everything. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.